Hey guys, Hitman89 here. I hope you're doing great. Last week, we had the best RPGs of all time, and today, we're gonna be looking at the best co-op games to play right now. I decided to start with Sniper Elite 5 because it's on both Game Pass and PS Plus with full crossplay support. Now, even though the game is already fun and solo, offering the possibility to have a Hitman-like approach, climbing around and sneaking up on enemies to neutralize them from behind, if your co-op partner is a silly piece of shit like me, then you'll have a completely different experience. Because when I played with my brother, I spent most of the time trying to get him to walk next to some explosive barrels so I could blow his ass up. We also kept throwing corpses at each other, rolling on the floor and whistling all the time for no reason. Keep in mind the enemies are dumb as fuck, so you might want to crank the difficulty up a little bit, otherwise you'll find the game a little too easy. Good thing these slow-mo x-ray shots never get old. Now let's move on to the second game. Although Dead Island 2 is limited to 3 players instead of 4, at least you get to keep your progress whether you're the host or a guest. I mostly played this game alone and honestly, it was a blast. The gore system is the best I've ever seen, and I've been dismembering people since the early 2000s, in video games obviously. <laughs> so the combat system is fun as shit, and drop kicking zombies left and right and drowning them in pools is the icing on the cake. Now let's take a look at the third game, Baldur's Gate 3. I played it on PC cause at the moment of making this video, it's not out on PS5 yet, and I usually don't waste too much time making a character, but the characters in this game are so detailed and good looking that I must have spent at least an hour on the character creation screen trying out all sorts of combinations. Speaking of combinations, this D&D game has an overwhelming amount of choices and options with serious consequences on which sometimes you have to literally roll the dice and see if you can successfully persuade, deceive, or even intimidate people. Now when it comes to the turn-based combat system, there is a considerable difference between just starting a fight and hiding, carefully placing your units in the area, and using the environment to your advantage. The first approach tends to get half my teammates killed within two turns, while the second one makes it way easier for me to win fights. They're still challenging though, so Baldur's Gate 3 supports up to 4 players online and 2 players in split screen, which is awesome, but if you're still on the fence, all I can say is, you should roll the dice and see if you like it. <laughs> I had to do it. Anyway, the fourth game I want to show you is Remnant 2. And believe me, not only co-op makes the game more fun, but in this case, it makes it more doable. Cause Remnant 2 is real tough. There are 4 starting classes to choose from, I went with the sharpshooter even though I can't aim for shit, and whether I played solo or online, there's one thing that didn't change, and it's the fact that I died every 2 minutes. So if you're looking for a challenging looter shooter with procedurally generated levels, you might want to get this one. But if that's not really your cup of tea and you'd rather play a fun, isometric cyberpunk RPG, then maybe you should take a look at The Ascent, which first came out in 2021 on PC and Xbox, and then later on in 2022 on PlayStation. Speaking of which, it's currently on PS Plus, and as you can see, it still looks sick, especially the explosions. So I played The Ascent with my wife, she kept dying every 2 seconds and barely killed anyone. Was it fun? No, but if you don't play it with complete noobs, it can be a blast. It's also worth noting that The Ascent only supports crossplay between PC and Xbox, our number 6 on the other hand doesn't have this issue. During the open beta, I played Diablo 4 with my brother and my wife, none of them liked it, but I did. So when the full game came out, I no lifed the shit out of it and beat it in 3 days. Seriously, I ate, slept, worked out a little bit, cause you gotta look good for the ladies. And most importantly, I played Diablo 4 10 hours a day. I really liked the story, I thought the voice acting was awesome and the graphics were great. There were plenty of bugs though, as I showed you guys on my full review, but all around, Diablo 4 is an excellent game, and that's why it's on my list. Now the next game I wanna show you is completely different. On Moving Out 2, you play as movers, obviously, but compared to the first game, apart from being way crazier, this one supports online co-op. Personally, I prefer split screen because I think it's more fun, but when you can't have your friends over, online co-op with full crossplay support is the next best thing. And Moving Out 2 has both, plus slapping the shit out of your partner now makes them jump instead of just stunning them, giving you an excuse to do it all the time. Seriously, this game is hella fun. Try out the demo on Steam and see for yourself. 
Now if you want a seamless co-op game, check out Atlas Fallen, which is the only game on this list that's limited to two players. And it's a drop-in, drop-out system, meaning only the hosts keep their world progression. That being said, sand surfing, exploring the world, and fighting tougher enemies with a friend is really fun. Too bad you both have to be on the same platform though. Anyway, to future-proof this video, I decided to include two games that aren't out yet. The first one is Trine 5. If you haven't played Trine before, then you should know that combat isn't the real challenge here. It's puzzles. You have three characters to choose from and you can switch between them at will. I don't know about you, but whenever I play Trine, I spend 69% of the time sabotaging my friends. Last but certainly not least, Payday 3 could be the bank robbing game you need. It's been 10 years since Payday 2 and apart from the visual improvements, new tools and possibilities were added to make stealth a lot deeper. You can pretend to be a civilian, sneak past guards, take hostages and use them to negotiate with the police, or just use them as human shields. But if you're more like me, then you'll probably try stealth for about 30 seconds, then say fuck it and kill everyone. <laughs> Payday 3 releases September 21st with full crossplay support and it's landing day one on Game Pass, so go for it. Now before you click away, I still got two more games for you, but they came out in 2021 and that's why I put them in the honorable mentions part of the video. The first one is It Takes Two and it's probably the best modern co-op game you can play. You literally need a partner to play the game and it's got so much variety it's like you bought a bunch of co-op mini games. Valheim originally came out on PC but earlier this year it also released on Xbox. I played it a lot and if you have at least a friend who's willing to take this journey with you, you can't go wrong with Valheim. And that's gonna be it for the best co-op games to play right now. Let me know if I missed some good ones. By the way, half the games on my list also support split screen, so if you found this video useful, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Also, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. It's been Hitman89, see you guys very soon.